Hey everyone, Lior's here, another Jumpstart Lighting episode. I have Demetrius with me to talk to me about all things Winget. Stay tuned. Hey everyone, Lior's here, another Jumpstart Lightning episode. And today it's kind of a special episode because it's not on the usual topics of Arc, Hybrid, Edge, and, and all those good stuff. But I actually have Demetrius here to, with me to talk to me about Winget. So Demetrius, how are you doing, my friend? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm doing awesome. You know, Demetrius, I wanted to bring you here to the show to talk to you about uh, Winget because we are heavily invested in the Jumpstart. We're heavily invested in Winget. But before we do that, who you are, what is it that you do? Yeah, so I'm Demetrius Nealon, and I'm the product manager for Winget. Um, I handle the Windows Package Manager as well as the work we're doing on configuration management. So, Demetrius, you know, Winget has been one of those things that I've been following for a while, right? And I started to convert in my head and also... Uh, you know, the Jumpstart team, we started to convert to Winget as it kind of became more and more feature-rich, stable. Um, and there's a lot of good things that are happening in this space. And this is really why I wanted to bring you here. So let's just get going. What is Winget for, you know, the audience that is not familiar with this? Yeah, it's a, it's a package manager. It's really designed to help you manage software in your system. You might want to install, upgrade, uninstall. Um, we've got about 5,000 packages in the repository, and we're branching over into configuration management as well, where you can just give us a file that defines how you want your environment set up, and we'll apply it for you. Yeah, you know, I uh, uh, some more context to you know to the viewer here to the viewers here is that we, you know, historically we've been kind of working with Chocolati, which is you know kind of the obvious comparison here, and as we were starting to convert into to Winget. You know that there was a lot of small nuances with Winget that we really liked, um, and you're going to show me some of those uh, today. And also, obviously, the deep integration that you guys have with PowerShell, um, and you know, with DSC and all those good stuff, which are at the core of our automations in the Jumpstart. So I know that you have a lot of good things to show me today, uh, Demetrius. So let's just get going. Yeah, you bet. So I'll jump into Windows Terminal. I'm using PowerShell Seven. Just going to run Winget without any arguments just to get the list of all the top level commands. Uh, mm -hmm. We've got plenty of rich help in here that you can ask for per command and, and drill in and get a lot of the details. Um, typically, the, the flow somebody's going to go through is they're going to search for some software. So I'll search for VS Code. Um, typically, our uh, package identifiers are dotted. It's that column in the middle under ID. And mm -hmm. What you'll see is I search for VS Code. We're picking that up on the moniker on that match column, and we've got quite a few things in there. One of the other benefits is we actually have many versions of packages. So what you typically see mm -hmm. here in the version column is just the latest. And if I do Winget show VS Code, you'll see some of the metadata, including which installer we would default to and the hash mm -hmm. that we're going to check if we install it. But if you wanted to see the versions, you can Winget show VS Code versions. And that's going to list all of the versions we have in the community repository. Um, show two dashes. <laughs> yeah, I get uh, get that all the time. So you know, this is something you expect out of a package manager is to be able to pick and choose which things you want to install. Um, yeah. There's also quite a few different settings that you can do. You can specify preferences like install architecture and scope and locale. Um, and, and you can also set them as a requirement. So if the software doesn't support it, it's not going to be installed. We really designed it with automation in mind in the beginning. Um, mm -hmm. And I would say one of the one of the key differentiators that we have is all of the metadata that we operate on is declarative. So there's not any scripted behaviors. There's not sort of sequencing type things other than dependencies. Uh, and I can show you an example of uh, uh, Windows Terminal. And if you look at the bottom of the output, you'll see that it's got a dependency on UI.xaml. Um, we've recently added support yeah. to install Windows features um, as dependencies. So things like the .NET runtime and virtualization. Those are yeah. real common ones. So we expect we'll be adding WSL here to the repository pretty quickly. And you'll be able to do things like Winget install Ubuntu that'll take the dependency on WSL and subsequently virtualization. Um, in our latest release 1.7 that just went uh, release candidate a couple of days ago, we've mm -hmm. added the repair command. We've added quite a few other enhancements. I'll bring up the release notes real quick so you can take a peek at that. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and on the configuration management side, we're going to accept a URL now rather than just a local file. So lots of goodness out there. Yeah. Um, something else recently announced, uh, the Windows Server Insider uh, preview now mm -hmm. includes Winget by default. So yeah. we're really starting to see wide adoption. Um, you know, uh, you know, Dimitri, I just kind of to share with you a story as you were talking about this, because obviously Winget is very much talking to the, you know, to the inner loop and the bootstrap side of things, right? As you are bootstrapping an environment or you're doing some, you know, some local development as part of your inner loop uh, process. But to share with you like a, you know, like a story, and I think that you know this, but, um, you know, a few months back, I think it was over a year uh, at this point, I was, I was trying to install uh, uh, Winget on Windows Server. And that's where I was starting to kind of be like, okay, there's a lot of things that needs to happen in order to install Winget on Win Server. I know that it's not the case anymore, and things are much, you know, obviously much e easier and streamlined at this point. But it also made me realize how powerful this tool is because of the fact that I was investing so much time just to get it on Windows Server, you know. Um, and I'm saying that in a good way because this is something that I thought worth having. Um, and the thing that you just mentioned around dependencies and, you know, the fact that you guys, that you guys are just now with the WSL thing, like I can already imagine the, you know, the inner loop automations that one can have as a developer, you know, to just kind of bootstrap their entire development environment. Absolutely. Yeah. Cool. So I know that you have another part of, you know, for this demo, um, like talk to me about the, you know, the internals here and some of the DSC stuff that you guys are having. Sure. So the Winget configuration is really built on top of PowerShell's desired state configuration. And this is something yeah. that's been around in Windows Server since about 2013. Um, on server, there's something called a local configuration manager that would apply these configurations, it would do auditing, and it would enforce them. Mm -hmm. When we get into some of the developer scenarios, there's a little caveats that are there. You know, sometimes developers don't want things to be forced back into that state. They want to have control over it. And they'll occasionally want to be able to do things like regression testing and pull in other versions of dependencies. So we don't actively go in and just constantly enforce that. We only run when we're invoked. And part of the work we're doing with the PowerShell team includes things like being able to export your configuration and get properties out. There was some work done a while back on reverse DSC, and we see some really great things there. Um, yeah. Another big thing that's happening right now is DSC v3 is in development. And one of the great benefits there is you don't have to pull down PowerShell modules. Your application actually becomes its own resource. Yeah. And things like Winget or other orchestrators can talk directly to the applications to configure it them. That's pretty it's, big. Yeah, I mean, that's a big paradigm shift. You know, in the Windows yeah. world, not a lot of people are doing infrastructure as code. And, and even fewer people are going out there and building these DSC resources to behave in an item potent way. You know, yeah. the last thing you want is, you know, some ordered script that's adding something to your path and you run it over and over again. And now your path is full and, it, you know, performance right. problems, all and, kinds of things. And also like, you know, partial model versioning management, that's another, you know, kind of big hustle. It's one of the it's one of the biggest pain points. Like if you're coming from that space of, you know, PowerShell and DSC and all of that, like partial models versioning, it was like, I, I remember myself since the early days of DSC, just kind of like trying to figure out, okay, how do I actually make sure that I'm up to date at all times? Like what is the best way to do that? So we come a long way, that's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, the other thing I've been doing, you know, since we're bringing so many new people into this technology, we've mm -hmm. been working on putting a bunch of sample configurations out open source. Um, we've got them in the Dev Home repository, but we have a, mm -hmm. a lovely short URL. It's one of those AKAMS URLs, and yeah. it's just AKAMSDSC.yaml. Mm -hmm. And that's just going to redirect you into Dev Home where these samples are. And yeah. we've got them broken down into a few groups. We've got a section of templates for developing in different programming languages. Mm -hmm. These are designed to really help bootstrap that experience of getting set up to build, you know, for example, a C-sharp project or a Python project. Mm -hmm. We've gone in through several GitHub repositories and built configurations for those. That's going to enable you to go to an open source repository, clone that project, run the configuration, and you're ready to code. You don't have to go through the readme and try to figure out sequencing and dependencies and then yeah. where we're investing pretty heavily right now is in samples so i'm going to talk today about the windows sandbox sample yeah. um, 
not many people know about Windows Sandbox. It's a great little utility. Think of it like a container. It yeah. spins up lightweight. It's nice and fast. It's ephemeral, so it just goes away and you can always get into that clean state. I oh. use it pretty frequently to go in and build configurations. So I'm going to show you a small configuration that I've built using oh. Sandbox. This is our YAML schema that we use. And again, it's declarative. And all this thing is really going to do is it's going to spin up a sandbox and yep. then it's going to run a setup script. And that setup script gets kicked off in that default admin user context. Going to make sure that Winget is bootstrapped. And then it's going to run another configuration I have in the, in the C drive that is enabling some Windows settings. Mm -hmm. All that one's really going to do is it's going to turn seconds on in the clock and it's going to enable dark mode. And this one, yep. it's going to go ahead and restart Explorer so that dark mode gets applied to the entire OS. Mm -hmm. And that's Perfect. just as easy as a single command. So I'm going to go ahead and from the sandbox directory, I'm going to winget configure the sandbox. Uh, it's actually going to read the configuration. If the mm -hmm. modules from the PowerShell gallery are not on my system, it's going to go ahead and download them for me. Get the uh, the lovely warning. This is very powerful. It can quite literally do anything to your system. So you want to make sure you know what you're doing before you run them. Hmm. And then it's actually going to do things. And so what it's doing here is it's kicking off sandbox. I'll drag that over from my default monitor so you can see it. Mm -hmm. It's going to use the repair Windows package manager commandlet or repair Winget package manager commandlet to mm -hmm. bootstrap and get in the sandbox. And once it's been bootstrapped, it'll run that script that we talk about. And so while this is running, I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the other things that we've been working on with the community. Uh, mm -hmm. DSC community has got lots of DSC resources for doing things. Yeah. Uh, one for SQL Server. There's a M365 DSC resource for managing M365. Mm -hmm. Really powerful collection of resources. But there's still some gaps. Um, we've been working on building several of them for other package managers like NPM and Python's PIP. Um, oh. You know, the goal here is really to bootstrap these developer environments, from my point of view. But clearly looking at Azure Jumpstart, there's a lot more scenarios than just these developer scenarios. You've got yeah. IT pro scenarios. You've got IT operations scenarios. Lots of different really valuable reasons where you would want configuration yeah. management. And yeah. as we and as we look forward to the future, a lot of the work here is going to be community involvement and identifying and helping us to build and test DSC resources and looking at that future of V3 where we implement the resource capability directly in the applications themselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I uh, I'm loving it. You know, uh, we're proud to be part of the Winget, uh, you know, community being so heavily invested in this. And and you're right. I mean, the sandbox thing is definitely a, it's a kept secret and it should be more you know, visible. So I'm happy that you uh, that you have a chance here to to showcase this. I think that, you know, if you're thinking about if you're thinking about Winget and you mentioned the other scenarios, like those scenarios that are go beyond just the developer environment. Right. Um, you know, I remember coming, you know, 20 years ago, coming from this space of IT. And I remember, you know, just doing early days of configuration management, you know, and again, coming a long way since since then. Having an environment that is one declarative described via a YAML, secondly is encapsulated in a sandbox fashion. These are things that we can only dreamed of, you know, uh, not many years ago. Um, so I'm happy that we're, you know, just kind of progressing in this space because it makes the again it makes that inner loop experience so much easier and so much fun, you know. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's pretty exciting, you know, and I know this is a, you know, reasonably trivial demo here of just, you know, showing seconds yeah. in the clock and enabling dark mode, but you can leverage Winget to install software for you and then anything that's got a resource, it'll configure. Um, if you've got yeah. some existing investments in scripts, you know, you can fairly easily kind of wrap those up in configuration. So it's not a, you know, lift and shift, you have to rewrite everything. We're yeah. really trying to embrace, um, you know, everybody where they are. And part of the reason we picked PowerShell DSC is it's got lovely integration with a lot of other mm -hmm. infrastructure as code solutions like Chocolatey, Chef, Puppet, Ansible, yep. Terraform, you name it. And if you really are invested in Chocolatey and you don't want to switch over to Winget, 
you can call the chocolatey DSC resource and we'll leverage chocolatey to install that software for you. So, yeah. you know, the goal here is really to solve problems and eliminate developer toil. I'm loving it. Thank you so much, uh, Demetrius, for, for this uh, for this uh, awesome demo and you know explanation about about Winget. And I also know that uh, you also have gonna have a session in Partial Conf in in June. So definitely, yeah. if you are in the area, go uh, go check it out uh, with Demetrius. We're also gonna be there um, in some shape or form. So that's gonna be that's gonna be awesome. Again, Demetrius, thank you so much for uh, for joining me today. And for the Jumpstart audience, thank you so much for your continuous support. Make sure to like, subscribe for watching more of these type of episodes and we're going to see you on the next one bye everyone